Hey, so recently I created an SDF system that lets you draw boxes with empties. It's just an ordinary box SDF, but it's controlled by these two primary points that dictate the general shape of the whole thing. And I've got some alternative actions you can do with these empties and get some fun interactions. But I'll get to all of that extra stuff later. Let's first just talk about the main part of the shader, which is pretty simple. You see, the core concept of the shader just has to do with drawing boxes using only two points. So we can take the positions of these two empties and plug them into our shader. To start, I definitely make sure to enable the pinning option on the shader that you're gonna apply this to. And that means that when we click on an empty to look at its information, we won't lose our original node graph of the plane. Click one of our empties that we want to take the position of, open the end panel of that empty so that we can see its positional information, and then bring in a node that can store that information. In this case, I'll just be using a combined XYZ node, and we'll just start out by taking the X parameter of this and plugging it in over here. So I'll assume you have no experience with using drivers, but even then, it's surprisingly easy to do this. All we'll do is hover over the X location of our empty, right-click and tap the N key immediately afterwards, then hover over the X input of our combined XYZ node, right-click that and click the P key. This way, we're copying that parameter as a new driver and pasting it as a new driver in our combined XYZ node. We'll do the same for the Y axis on this empty and paste it into the Y component of our XYZ node. We'll leave the Z socket empty for now for simplicity. So now, by looking at our node output, we see a fully solid color. We're now able to visualize the position of our empty using this vector. So here I can increase its red or green values, while bringing it downwards or to the left doesn't visualize anything because we can't see negatives. But we do know they're there because as we change the empty's position and exit out of that, we see that transformation applied to our vector. So let's bring it somewhere over here in the top right, take our original object coordinates, add a math node, set it to subtract, and subtract our empty's positional vector. This means that we're shifting our coordinates to the location of our empty, which means it now has its own little local space. And we can already use this to draw some stuff. I'll use a length and compare node to draw a circle, for example. And like I said, it's following along our empty in XY space. But we're not drawing circles, so let's apply the same two node process to the other empty. Once again, I'll swap over to the empty we want, bring in another combined XYZ node, right click the X axis of this new empty, copy it as a new driver with N, paste it as a new driver with P, and repeat this for the Y axis. By now you probably know how this works, it's just the same thing for the other empty. And just like the other empty, we'll be subtracting our original coordinates by the second empty's position. So we now have the texture coordinates for both of our empties. But in this case, we actually want to flip the vectors of one of them. We'll use the empty on the bottom left for this, add a vector math node, and set it to scale, which multiplies our vectors on every axis. And like I said, I do want to flip our vectors, so we'll scale it by a negative one by just tapping the minus sign over it. Now you might think that having these two positions with one flipped, we have one, two, three, and four sides of our box, which is a very smart thing to notice. But if you just add them together, their negatives actually cancel out. And so you might go through some process of doing a maximum operation in between, but actually all you need to do is combine them with a single maximum operation. But don't be fooled by it, because there actually are negatives underneath it. If I use an absolute operation to show you, we actually see that these coordinates aren't very useful for us. And by now, if you're familiar with the SDF of a square, you might already know that it's pretty easy to get the external SDF of this box. Here we're using a maximum node set to zero so that we can remove all negative vectors, and then using a length operation to get the distance. I'll bring in my SDF viewer from an add-on to show that we now have the external SDF of a box but not the internal. To add the negative interior values of this box, we'll actually go back to our texture coordinates before our maximum operation. That means there are still negatives in the black part of this texture. And use a minimum node set to zero so that we only keep vectors that are either zero or negative. From here, we can actually just take the max of X and Y and add those negative values to our original distance gradient. Now, when we look at the SDF viewer, 
we can see that it really does have correct internal gradients. So with this pretty simple shader, we can already use drivers to get this custom box shape. But to showcase drivers even better, I'd like to add a few more empties with a little more functionality. So what I want are two more empties that land on the adjacent corners that we've just described, these two. And as it turns out, that has almost nothing to do with shaders. So I'll go ahead and do that, but speed it up. And there we have it. I made sure these constraints completely disregard the z-axis, as I want all of them to have an independent z-axis for some future utility we can add to the shader. But for now, these two corners are the secondary ones, and they have no effect on the shader. It's only this point and this point that describes the shape of our box. So now that we have an empty on every corner, and each empty itself has an independent z-axis, I'm going to go ahead and feed the z-axis of each empty into our shader so that we can use it to manipulate our shape. I want it to be a rounding system for each corner separately. So I'll go ahead and copy my main shader that this is based off of and try lifting just one of the empties that define my SDF. So this has a pretty interesting rounding system. It works independently for all four corners. And like I mentioned before, it's entirely based on the z-axis of each empty. So even when it's rounded, you can still manipulate the shape just as usual. And to do all this, I've actually separated the corners of the box within our shader into four unique groups for each corner. And that is what this node group outputs. So internally, this node group isn't very complex. All it's using is the positions of each empty relative to the center of the box, which I took by just averaging out the positions of two diagonal empties, and then separating, like I said, each corner by its height position. So here's the top right corner, and as I increase the height of this empty, we can see that its value increases just for that corner. The same goes for all the other empties. One small detail is that this absolute node means that even if the z-axis goes into the negatives, its value still increases, which is just a utility that I wanted to add. So now you might be wondering how this simple increase in value might correspond with the rounding effect that I just showed you. Well, the math might seem a little advanced, but let's replace our rounding mask that I just showed you with a singular value. Now this mask I'm showing you is fully redundant, and instead we're fully relying on this singular value. You see, this system actually acts as a rounding parameter, where increasing it rounds the corners of the box. Now this effect is actually a little more complicated than the rest of the shader, and it requires a bit of vector math, so I won't cover it in this specific video. But it is an effect I've used in my end gun shader, so you can check it out over there. But because of this rounding parameter, we can super easily plug in the z positions of our empty as the input. And this means that instead of a value rounding every corner by some constant, the rounding is fully dependent on our z mask. And that means that raising every empty in our scene will round all of the corners uniformly, which can be super useful. And lastly, I added an additional little empty that acts as a very simple rotational gizmo. This is done by just rotating our texture coordinates with these three nodes, where this value is using the rotation of this as a driver input. And you might notice that unusually so, I have something plugged into the center socket of this rotation node, which happens to be, like I said, the average of the two diagonal empties, meaning that no matter the location of our box, it will still rotate correctly. Now, this system is pretty fun to make, and it's pretty simple as well. And of course, there's tons of different little utility pieces you can add through empties and drivers. But it's worth noting that this system does have limitations. More specifically, this rounding system does have the limitation of clipping once it exceeds the middle of a box's edge. So here, if I really push this rounding, we can see that it's actually rounding and clipping right past the middle of our edge. And that is completely dependent on our rounding input. So because it has such harsh lines and changes in value, you can get cuts between rounded corners. All right, I hope this video presented some practical uses for drivers and empties. And if this was too easy, I challenge you to do it with a triangle. All right, hope this helped. Happy practice.